This is the Pardo 60 Endurance. The first in a new range for Pardo. This Endurance range, obviously Pardo are quite a new company. They're known for their open walk around boats. They've got three models in that range. But now they've gone for this fully enclosed wheelhouse design. Shares a very similar hull shape with the open boats. Really distinctive with this reverse sheer bow, really prominent chines down here. And that's obviously sort of quite slab sided upright hull sides but it's a very, very striking thing. The rake of that windscreen, the very low profile, fly, low profile, the rake of that windscreen and the very low profile flybridge. It is an interesting design and the slope of the side decks here. It is a bit of a departure for them. And we'll jump on board and have a closer look. Prices, this boat starts at 1.4 million euros, excluding VAT. To spec, this one is 1.8 million euros. Uh, it's the first boat, it's a little bit heavier than what the main production run will be, maybe two tons heavier. It's got the smaller IPS engines as well. It's IPS 700 or 800, so top speed on this one, about 18 knots, 15 knot cruising speed for around sort of 250 nautical mile range. If you take it back to eight knots, you'll do nearly 700 nautical miles. So it's not a high performance boat, this. It's about sort of mid range cruising, but with a good range and in good comfort. And because of the design, the wheelhouse, you should be able to do it all year round. We'll start back here where you have this enormous bathing platform. It is a really, really good size, big enough to have a decent jet tender on here anyway. And then you see this panel in the door and that is access to the crew cabin now. The skipper is staying on board, so it's in use at the moment, so I won't go in, but you can see you've got two berths here and then a bathroom in the middle. Decent enough size actually for a 60 footer. Not too bad at all. Let's just close that up again. And then you have access into the cockpit from both sides. These boarding gates, obviously. We'll step over those. And then you're into the cockpit. And even though it's an enclosed boat, Pardo still wanted you to have that open feel of their walk around boats. And out on the water, that's really enhanced by these fold down platforms. A standard feature means that these sides here at the push of a button fold out to give you a really useful amount of extra usable space. Obviously you have them on both sides and you also have some railings that you can put in here. You can see they're actually stowed down the side deck. We'll have a closer look at those later. You can have some railings in there or you can leave them open, put furniture on there, use them to jump off, swim off, really, really, nice solution and there is a good connection to the water here it's nice and open at the transom and these backrests here on this bench actually fold flush they go down flat so you can make them into a sun pad big table here it's a high low table electronically controlled so you can raise or lower that so you can adjust the height if you want to you also have a canopy that comes out from this section here to put some shade over this area if you're really in the heat of the day and that could be quite useful Coming over to this side, you actually have a third station for the IPS. It's an IPS boat. You have pod drive, joystick control. You have a flybridge helm. You have a lower helm. And then here you have this position. You've also got the bow thruster here as well. It means that from here, you've got a really good view down the side of the boat. If you're coming alongside, starboard side too, like we are now, and especially if you're going stern too, if you're in the Mediterranean, you're in a great position with a really good view, nice and close to the aft end of the boat. It's an optional extra but a useful one to have. And obviously you have your mooring gear on both sides. And they've actually got fridges on both sides as well, so that you don't have to go into the galley to get a cold drink if you're relaxing on the sun pad. We'll stay on the main deck, heading forward. And this, there's no guardrails on this boat, but these are really, really tall. These bulwarks come up to my hip level. So you do feel nice and safe and secure, despite the fact that there are no guardrails. This is where the railings stow that go on the balconies. I mentioned them earlier, so they just slot in there. And then you have these sockets where you put the, the fenders. Obviously, there's no railings to tie the fenders to here. There's railings further forward, but here you have to use these sockets. Side door into the helm station. We'll have a look at that from the inside. Really nice, big, substantial cleats pop up as well. So you can put them down so they're out the way when you're not tied up alongside. And then even though this side deck is a little bit lower and the bulwark doesn't come up quite as high, you've got a nice handrail here to steady yourself as you move forward to the foredeck. Where you just have a nice big slab 
of sampans here and I like the fact they've incorporated a little bench up here so you can face forward back into the boat. This is a nice little sociable area. If you're moored stern too, it means you can come right to the front of the boat, get away from the quayside and just have a little bit of privacy away from the crowds. It's nice that you've got teak up on here as well. If I step up onto the sandpad, you've got teak here up on the coach roof so you can walk from the flybridge down this and down onto the foredeck. If you need to get up to the bow in a hurry from the flybridge, you don't have to go back down the steps. You can walk down this area, which is quite helpful. And if it's not too hot, that's quite a nice place to sit as well. Some of the detailing up at the foredeck is quite nice. Pop-up lights give you a bit of ambient light if you're here in the evening. Speakers up here, obviously, so you can listen to some music. And this port side deck mirrors the starboard one exactly. And you can see the pop-up cleats. This one's in the down position. And you've got this nice stainless steel strip as well so that the lines don't rub against the teak, they rub against the stainless steel. And again, you can see the break in the deck here where the balconies are. So they run from here all the way down to this very aft end. So they really are a really good size. And we'll stay on deck and we'll go up to the flybridge, which Pardo purposefully didn't want to make too large. They wanted to keep the boat's center of gravity quite low. So it's a relatively basic design. You know, there are 60 foot boats with flybridges that are far more luxurious than this. So it's a slightly different take on it to a traditional flybridge boat. But most importantly, you've got a helm position up here. So you can drive from up here when the weather's good. So again, it's a simple helm design, but it just gives you another place to drive the boat from, which is, which is nice. And you have sunbathing space all around, and then this two-way backrest on this squab here, so it becomes the helm seat, but then you also have it flipped the other way and becomes a, another, another seat opposite this open area here where this particular owner's just got some freestanding furniture. There is a bimini for some shade. It's an electric bimini. The push of the button, that bimini comes up and provides some shade over this area and you have got a little draw fridge down here and down here so there's some cooling space up here so again you don't have to go down to the galley to get cold drinks so if we head back down and we will have a look at the interior so the nice thing about this design is that obviously you can enclose it completely but you see here the door splits in half and then it opens right across the port side then you have this flip up window. So it really opens up the aft end of the saloon to the cockpit. And you have this really good indoor, outdoor living space. You have the galley directly backing on to the cockpit. And the galley is actually split. So you have your cooking side of the galley over here where you've got the hob and you've got the oven. And then on the other side you have the sink. So you have sort of double the amount of counter space. It's a really good way of getting a really good sized galley in by splitting it across the boat. And what's nice is they fiddled these galley countertops so things can't roll off or slide off when you're at sea. It's a stylish boat this but it's built with practicality in mind as well. It is, it is built to be used. There's a little step up to the central part of the dinette. You have this dresser to the starboard side, drink storage, wine fridge. This table like the one in the cockpit is high low so it goes up and down on this leg. You can open up these leaves to sort of double the size of the table. You just have this comfortable wrap of seating here on the port side. This is your internal helm station. It's a bit of a stretch to get to these MFDs. They're a little bit of a stretch away from the helm seat. The helm seat's actually folded down at the moment, but you can put it up like that so it turns into a seat, or you can do it that way and use it as more like a leaning post. Full adjustment on the wheel as well. The wheel's adjustable. Of course, you have your throttles for the IPS engines and the joystick. This boat also has a bow thruster fitted. You've got three MFDs here, completely configure what they're showing, and you've got another Volvo painter screen down here on the helm. What I would say is that the design here, this sort of sloping styling line that you have mimicked in the deck and the superstructure, creates a bit of a blind stop spot for starboard. So I wonder if when you're out at sea and looking backwards, it could be a bit difficult to see behind you. View forward's pretty good though. You know, they've got two slim mullions here. Nice piece of glass on the starboard side so you don't get a blind spot. And it's a great view through this inwardly raked windscreen over that bow there. And if we head downstairs, you get to the accommodation. If you move right forward, you have the VIP cabin. So this you can have a double bed or you can have this layout here which is two singles which is nice because it gives you a load of floor space to walk around in in the middle of the cabin 
and it also makes it a bit more flexible. If it's not a couple staying in here, then they don't have to stay in a double bed. Headroom is really, really good. Really good, very, very high. And then you have this well as well up into the skylight. There's obviously a deck hatch as well, so you can open this to get some ventilation when the cushions aren't on there. You have storage on both sides. Same on the other side, and there's also storage underneath the beds as well. Really nice cabin this, really good size. Feels very luxurious considering it's a guest cabin. And just look at the heft of these doors. Everything feels really substantial. Shuts with a nice feeling of quality. It is a very well put together boat. You really feel that in the cabinetry. Then we have the other guest cabin. So this is a twin. You know, two single beds here. Headroom again is very good here. You know, I'm six foot one, I've got plenty above my head. It does go down a bit as you move into the cabin, but actually the floor drops down as well. So you've got just as much headroom when you're between the berths. Again, there's storage here. And this cabin is en suite. And find a light switch. There we go. So it has access, but this is actually the day heads as well. So this is the, the bathroom that all guests will use in the day, but this cabin has direct access to it. Reminds me, didn't show you the VIP bathroom, of course, this being the VIP guest cabin, obviously it has a private ensuite. It's a nice size in itself. Find the light again. A separate shower cubicle, Tecmar toilet, bit of storage and a nice deep sink, and there's also some ventilation in here, so you can let steam out if you're having a shower. And then last but not least, of course, you have the master cabin. And it has this lovely lobby area, which creates a bit of a sense of occasion as you walk into this space. Then I've got to sort my lights out. Here we go. There you can see it properly now. So you have this lobby area, which has sort of gentle steps down to the floor of the master cabin itself. As you walk in on the starboard side, you have the ensuite bathroom, which has a really large separate shower cubicle with a rain shower head. I like the way they've got a light within that shower head as well, that's nice. Again, double ventilation in there through two portholes, enough space for a BDA and a toilet, and then a nice big sink with storage above and below. And this is a really, really spacious cabin. It sort of takes you by surprise. It's such a low profile boat from the outside that you can't imagine really that you'd have such a spacious full beam cabin here. And again, headroom is excellent. I'm really like, properly in the cabin here and loads and loads of space above my head. I like the finish as well. It almost feels sort of Scandinavian with this lovely sort of light woodwork, light finishes. It's not too fussy. It's really nicely made, but it's functional and practical. Nothing sort of looks like it's there for show. Got some storage up here for books, you know, strips of hole window either side, again, with some natural ventilation in them. Storage dotted all over the place. Bedside tables, there's storage down there. Storage in the corner, little run of storage down here. Big double wardrobe. On this side, you've got a little bureau here. You can see the owner's actually been on board, so you can see this is in use. There's work files and things down here. You know, you can actually come away and work down here if you want to. It's a nice place to sit, and it's quiet and private away from guests. But it's a really impressive space. That's the accommodation. Last place to look is the engine room. So access the engine room is through this hatch in the cockpit and there's a ladder and she stepped down onto the gyro. So I'll step down and then we'll take it up from there. So as I said, this boat is currently being used. So you've got you know, equipment in here, the toolbox is out, but you can see the space for the IPS 800s here. access to the pod drives down there you can see that door there that's access into here directly from the crew cabin so crew don't have to come up on deck to get to the engine space they can get straight into here from their cabin got the generator mount in the middle with the gyroscope directly beneath me lots and lots of soundproofing it's a very quiet boat this and you can see why it would be when you've got this much sound insulation down here in the engine room so there you have it that's the Pardo 60 endurance i do hope you enjoy the tour Please give it a like if you did and remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon 
so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks a lot. Bye.